Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. Uh, we have a great show for you tonight. Uh, Mr. Tim Pate is standing by in the wings, ready to play some music for us. Uh, we have, hey Tim, there you are. Uh, we have uh, an extensive newscast for you this evening. We'll be taking your phone calls as well. If you have a question about ending adult marijuana prohibition, restoring industrial hemp, or helping medical marijuana patients, you can call us here shortly. But uh, as we always do, we're going to bring out the infamous dancing cannabis leaves. Our first story tonight is out of our nation's capital in Washington, D.C. The uh, police made 853,838 arrests in 2010 for marijuana-related offenses, according to the Federal Bureau of Investigation's annual Uniform Crime Report, which was released yesterday. The annual arrest total is among the highest ever reported by the agency. It is nearly identical to the total number of cannabis-related arrests reported in 2009. According to the report, marijuana arrests now comprise more than one half or 52 percent of all drug arrests in the United States. An estimated 46 percent of all drug arrests are for offenses related to marijuana possession alone. Today, as in past years, the so-called drug war remains fueled by the arrests of minor marijuana possession offenders at a disproportionate percentage of whom are uh, ethnic minorities. It makes no sense to continue to waste law enforcement's time and taxpayer dollars to arrest and prosecute responsible Americans for their use of a substance that poses far fewer health risks than alcohol or tobacco. Of those charged with marijuana law violations, 750,000, or 88%, were arrested for marijuana offenses involving possession only. The remaining 103,000 individuals were charged with sales manufacture category that includes virtually all cultivation offenses. By region, the percentage of marijuana arrests was highest in the Midwest, where 63.5% of all drug arrests were for marijuana, and the South, where 57% were for marijuana. And uh, the lowest were in the, rep in the West here, where uh, cannabis prosecutions comprised only 39% of the total drug arrests. By contrast, the percentage of arrests for heroin and cocaine was lowest in the Midwest, where they had 14 percent, and highest in the Northeast with 29 percent. Overall, law enforcement agents nationwide arrested 1,638,000 people last year for drug abuse violations, surpassing arrests for all other crimes. Since 2000, law enforcement have reported making an estimated 7.9 million arrests for marijuana violations. Next story is out of Tel Aviv in Israel. Cannabis use is associated with a reduction in Crohn's disease activity and disease-related surgeries, according to the results of a retrospective observational study published in the August issue of the Journal of the Israeli Medical Association. Investigators at the Meir Medical Center, Institute of Gastroenterology and Hepatology, assessed disease activity, use of medication, need for surgery, and hospitalization before and after cannabis use in 30 patients with Crohn's disease. The authors reported, quote, all patients stated that consuming cannabis had a positive effect on their disease activity and documented significant improvement in 21 subjects. Specifically, researchers found that subjects who consume cannabis significantly reduced their need for other medications. Participants in the trial also reported requiring fewer surgeries following their use of cannabis. The uh, authors reported, quote, 15 of the patients had 19 surgeries during an average period of nine years before cannabis use, but only two required surgeries after an average period of three years of cannabis use. Uh, the authors concluded, quote, 
The results indicate that cannabis may have a positive effect on disease activity as reflected by a reduction in disease activity index and in the need for other drugs and surgery. Prospective placebo-controlled studies are warranted to fully evaluate the efficacy and side effects of cannabis in Crohn's disease." End quote. Researchers at the Meyer Medical Center are presently evaluating the safety and efficacy of inhaled cannabis for patients with Crohn's and ulcerative colitis in a double-blind placebo-controlled trial. Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are inflammatory bowel diseases. According to survey data published earlier this year in the European Journal of Gastroenterology and Hepatology, an estimated one-third of patients with colitis and one-half of subjects with Crohn's disease acknowledge having used cannabis to mitigate their disease symptoms. Full text of the study, Treatment of Crohn's Disease with Cannabis, an observational study, appears in the Journal of the Israeli Medical Association. It's online at ima.org.il. That's ima.org.il. Our uh, next story is out of Santa Monica, California. The closing of medical marijuana dispensaries are associated with an increase in incidence of criminal activity in those locations, according to an assessment of crime statistics published this week by the RAND Corporation. Researchers analyzed Los Angeles crime data for the 10 days prior to and the 10 days following a June 7, 2010 closure that was ordered by the city of Los Angeles of more than 70 percent of the city's 638 medical marijuana dispensaries. The authors limited their analysis to 10 days because court challenges prompted some closed dispensaries to reopen. The uh, study, the RAND Corporation summarized uh, in a press release, studying crime both before and after a large number of dispensaries were shut down in Los Angeles. Researchers found that incidents such as break-ins rose in neighborhoods of closed dispensaries relative to dispensaries allowed to remain open, at least in the short term. In the blocks with the closed dispensaries, the study observed crime up to 60 percent greater than comparable blocks with open dispensaries, but the effects were not apparent across a wider area. The uh, study's authors also said, quote, if medical marijuana dispensaries are causing crime, then there should be a drop in crime when they close. Individual dispensaries may attract crime or create a neighborhood nuisance, but we found no evidence that medical marijuana dispensaries in general cause crime to rise, end quote. Previous analysis of crime statistics in Denver, Los Angeles, and Colorado Springs also found no data supportive of the notion that the locations of dispensaries are associated with elevated incidences of criminal activity. The full text of the Rand Corporation study Regulating Medical Marijuana Dispensaries, an overview with preliminary evidence of their impact on crime, is available at rand.org. That's R-A-N-D dot O-R-G. Our uh, next story is out of Berkeley, California. The uh, proliferation of Dutch coffee shops, which allow the sale of limited quantities of marijuana to patrons age 18 or older, appears to have little impact on Dutch cannabis use patterns according to an analysis published online in the scientific journal Addiction. University of California at Berkeley researcher Robert McCoon compared some 40 years of Dutch data on cannabis prevalence, patterns of use, treatment, sanctioning, process, and purity with comparable data from Europe and the United States. McCoon concluded, quote, Dutch citizens use cannabis at a more modest rate than some of their European neighbors and they do not appear to be particularly likely to escalate their use relative to their counterparts in Europe and in the United States. Moreover, there are indications that rather than increasing the gateway to hard drug use, separating soft and hard drug markets possibly reduced the gateway." End quote. Among those aged 15 to 16, only 6.5 percent of Dutch teens acknowledge having used an illicit drug other than cannabis versus 19 percent of American teens. In addition, American adolescents are far, far more likely than their Dutch peers by 72 percent to 46 percent to say that cannabis is fairly or easy to obtain. An estimated 700 retail cannabis outlets presently operate in the Netherlands, employing some 3,000 to 4,000 workers. The full text of this study, What We Can Learn from the Dutch Cannabis Coffee Shop System, appears in the online journal Addiction. That's the end of our hemp news segment for tonight. Jump over to Mr. Tim Pate, who's standing by, ready to uh, play his guitar. I am, sir. All 
All right. I'm not surprised that uh, the crime rate dropped, like it, like this, the report said. Uh, that mm -hmm. was uh, it was very interesting to see that, uh, and I think that argument that that was posed there, you know, that the crime rate would increase because of the the fact that there were uh, dispensaries in the neighborhood, uh, it was a, a law enforcement argument, and it, it was, was. And, and it was based on no real information, and now that we have actual data. You know, it's good to have the actual counteracts data. what they said would Absolutely. be the case, which is usually the case in most of the data that the government feeds us on. on you cannabis. never know when your next opportunity to debate a police officer comes in. It's true. It happens on a regular basis around, you know, so why not be ready with good information? Just makes sense to me. Anyway, I think I'll play a little music. Thank you. So uh, we are live tonight. It is Friday, the 23rd of September. And if you have a question about ending adult marijuana prohibition, storing industrial hemp, or helping medical marijuana patients, you can call us at 503-288-4448. That's 503-288-4448. And we do have a caller standing by, I believe. Welcome, Tim. Thank and you. welcome to the show, caller. Hey, we'll shake hands. Are you there, caller? Are you there? Hello? Paul? Yeah, yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah, I lost you, Paul. How are you? Oh, there you are. <laughs> yeah, we've, we're uh, experimenting on our soundboard a little bit there. How are you doing? Up, oh, turn your television yeah, turn down. Turn your television well, down. We hey, have a um, I was calling to ask you, to ask you a couple things here. Um, Go right ahead. I, I talked to you last night. My name's Steve. I talked to you last week, you know, and I had that, uh, I said I was coming out of the closet a few months ago and putting them outside under plastic. Uh-huh. Well, they're doing great, especially the ones that are mostly sativa, except for, I've got a little, I wonder if you have any little advice on uh, powdery mildew and what can be done with that before it gets the root rot, which I've had on my indica ones, but the sativa ones are doing good mm -hmm. one thing you can do is use water that's slightly acidic uh, um, about 5 or, uh, or 4.5 pH oh that's a great idea huh? another thing uh, is uh, if you're not budding you can use neem no, oil funny. which is a uh, neem oil yeah neem oil which uh, will not only kill insects but mold and mildew as well you don't want to use that during the flower cycle because it'll give your flowers uh, flavor of neem which isn't probably the the flavor you're looking for now what if you uh now what if you uh used neem and washed the plants off well before harvest that should help that should help but yeah. not not totally yeah yep. i think distinguishing taste buds will know the difference of whether it was on there or not at any point 
I see. Okay, well, like I said, the Indicus has got the little bud, but, but uh, that's the way life goes, you yes. know, and yes. outside, and I'm just learning outside. Right. 20 years inside, so. Um, well, now, if you I use the neem week, now, you'd, you'd have enough time those buds are going to grow. You wouldn't want to use it past uh, uh, the end of next week. Because then you probably want to harvest in mid-October. So you'd want yeah, to give them a couple I'll weeks. Yeah, I'll harvest then. Um, and also, I talked to you um, last week about Kaiser and their pain clinic situation. Oh, yeah. yeah, I remember that. What did you find out? Yeah, well, um, I'm bus- I've just been trying to do research, you know, so mm-hmm. I can, like, bring it on to them and give it all to them at once. Sure. Um, I'm going to be talking to that doctor's supervisor. And I was just wondering if it would be possible... So, like I asked last week, call, make an appointment, and see if you had any recommendations or suggestions for me. Uh, yeah, sure. That's a possibility. Would you mind? No, just give our office a call. I'll do that. And like I said, my name's Steve. Been watching you forever. I think the whole thing is great, and I'm glad I just like retired from nursing and said, screw it. <laughs> you know? All right. Don't well, need my license anymore. Yeah. So, okay. I appreciate everything you've done. And everything you're doing for everybody. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, nice thank thing to you. say. Bye. And uh, now we have a studio audience member over here on the microphone. We have a studio audience here. If you ever want to come down and watch us uh, do our live show any Friday night, uh, then you can come down to Portland Community Media, 2766 Northeast Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. But uh, welcome to the show. Hello. Howdy. Hey. Um, I've heard from other patients, I don't know this personally, but I've heard from other patients that OHSU's pain clinic is very empathetic towards camp- cannabis. Mm-hmm. And I've heard that too, but then I heard a conflicting report recently that they had a <coughs> change of heart. And were So again, it, it depends on the doctor. I was going to just say that. I think it, I yeah. think you're right on that point. It does. Just like with uh, any system, I think each doctor has to look at each circumstance by patient. Uh, individually and sometimes they'd say yes and sometimes they might not and right. uh, you know I'm not not speaking to the consistency there but uh, I, I there are obvious patterns we have another caller ready if you have a question for us tonight you can call us at uh, 503-288-4448 and I'd like to welcome the caller to the show welcome hi my name is Elizabeth hello Elizabeth hi. I'm calling to let you know that I am an OMMP patient. It mm-hmm. has helped me a lot with female problems and with headaches, and also with my vision, which the state of Oregon does not recognize. Uh-huh. But they gave it to me for my headaches and for my female problems. But a, an amazing thing it does for me is that I have a virtual perceptual disability that makes packing and cleaning and seeing shapes and sizes very difficult. For example, my mom would have to come up with you and pack for me at college. But this year when I used cannabis, I was able to do 90% of the packing on my own. Oh, good. And I did wow. a poster board as well. Uh-huh. And I was wondering if you had any idea about why cannabis helped change my vision in a positive way. You know, it lowers interocular pressure. So for particularly for folks with glaucoma, uh, which is uh, a case where your, your retina is damaged by high interocular pressure or, or the pressure inside your eye, uh, then uh, uh, it's going to do that. It also modulates your endocrine system. So if you're out of balance, you know, like the, we were reading on before the show about patients with uh, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Those are uh, autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. So it modulates that and, and seeks homeostasis or balance of uh, the endocrine system. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Cannabis yeah, runs retrograde it. or in the opposite direction and modulates most of the other neurotransmitters and other hormones in the endocrine system. And so that's uh, what I've read anyway. Okay. And my last two comments are that I also feel like have the something that's important and I feel like it can save the world. It can Me be too. used in a form of fuel and in construction or declaration of independence is on that. And it cleans the air as it grows. They're using it in Chernobyl and going to use it in Japan to clean the air. And then could be grown in fertile land. So I'm hoping that everyone can get together to get hemp and cannabis legalized. Me too. We're well, working toward that end. You know, we have this initiative. There's the website right there, Cannabis Tax Act. 
It would legalize hemp and cannabis, allow people to grow their own without a license. It would regulate the sale of cannabis and allow unregulated industrial hemp cultivation. So uh, for all our viewers out there, if you can help our petition drive, then please go to that website and do so. You can uh, print out a petition and sign it and mail it into our office here on Sandy Boulevard in Portland. Or you can uh, ask for a volunteer package to mail more petitions or make a donation. In fact, Oregon... I'm actually, hmm? I'm actually doing volunteering for um, the Cannabis Tax Act. Well, thank you. Good. I've got the parents to sign, talking about how it's easier for kids to get um, cannabis than it is for them to get cigarettes and alcohol, because the drug dealer is not going to ask for an ID, but True. the drug to go on to. That's great. I really appreciate your help. I think my final question would be, um, can you explain a little bit about the um, links that people have been talking about between schizophrenia and cannabis use? I see that from what I understand is the chicken and the egg question, like you don't know which came first. The link between yeah, what? The schizophrenia and cannabis oh, use. Oh, uh, there are some people who most get, you know, about one out of a hundred people have uh, uh, a, a predisposition to schizophrenia. And so out of those one out of a hundred, about one out of uh, 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 ten of those, uh, cannabis can uh, cause a uh, psychotic episode. In fact, an old college roommate and I, uh, who just happens to be visiting from North Carolina, had a roommate, and direct anecdotal uh, experience with a roommate who uh, uh, had a psychotic episode when he used a large amount of cannabis, and we've seen it happen on rare occasions. About one out of a thousand people are uh, likely to, to have that kind of reaction. And so for most people who have schizophrenia, they find relief and help from the use of cannabis and suppression of psychotic episodes. But uh, uh, for that uh, uh, one percentage, that's the, the, the sole uh, uh, danger of cannabis is one out of a thousand people who have a prevalent, uh, predisposition to schizophrenia might experience a psychotic episode. Well, thank you very much. You're right that it is safer than all other drugs since it, you can't even overdose on it and has hardly any other side effects. Yeah, yeah, that's the, the single largest danger, and it's a pretty small percentage, less than well, one-tenth or one percent. All right, and well, thanks. Have a good day, and just remember Richard. to legalize cannabis and hemp as it can save the world. Yep. Thank you. Thanks for your support Welcome. and your work. We appreciate that. Bye. Yeah, I'd like to comment on one of the things that she brought up. One of the points, she said that the, they were using it to clean up Chernobyl. Mm -hmm. And when uh, I was at uh, CNS Specialty Builder Supply with Bill Condi, and then we discovered that uh, indeed there was a history in Eastern Europe of using cannabis uh, plants and hemp plants to remove heavy metals from the ground. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it just seems to make sense. One thing follows another. We have another studio audience member who has a question or comment here. Uh, welcome to the show, Kevin. go online they have several formulas that will help control it. There is no actual cure that I've found so far, but there's uh, baking soda. You use a tablespoon of baking soda. They say a tablespoon of salt, but you can trade it with food grade glycerin because mm -hmm. that's a wetting agent too. Mm -hmm. And uh, a tablespoon of vegetable oil and it any particular no time? taste and it almost it'll cure it for like two, three weeks at a time. I see. And it leaves no taste. They also say that you can spray uh, a diluted milk water on it. The grape growers down in California use up to a third skim milk and water on their plants. Really? They spray it every day. Oh, wow. You gotta spray it in the morning where it has all day to dry off. Mm -hmm. Supposedly that will keep it at bay if you got it going real bad and won't leave a taste. All right, well thank you. That's good information. There's two ways they can do it without leaving a taste on their marijuana. So vegetable oil and uh, a milk solution. Yeah. Uh, All right. Great. We have another caller. Welcome to the show, caller. Hi, Paul. This is John. Uh, you bought a couple of my quilts uh, with uh, the leaves. Oh, yeah. On. My wife loves those things. Oh, great. Hey, I have a question about uh, 
baked goods. I have a volcano vaporizer, and uh, if I use uh, it to go through with my herbs one time, can I save that herb uh, and collect it, say, in a pint jar, and then use that to make can of butter and do baked goods? Because there should be quite a bit of nutrients or good stuff still in that. Yeah, so, yeah. If you're just vaping it through your, your volcano one time, I would say it still has 80% or more of the, the cannabinoids. Okay, so just do a regular uh, can, uh, can of butter in a like a crock pot, and just uh, increase the uh, volume of my uh, herb. Yeah, just a little bit, or you could do it the same. It wouldn't it wouldn't make a huge difference. Oh, you're only vaping right. it once. So that way we can use it twice. Then that's good. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for that question. If you're out there and you have a question or comment for us tonight, you can call us at five zero three. 288-4448. That's 503-288-4448. We've been getting the calls quick there. I know. It's true. Well, good information, too. Uh, good questions, I should say. Yeah. Uh, leads us in the proper direction, I think, for discussion about what people really want to know, especially right now with mildew. There is a, a lot of that going on out there. That's true. Now's the season, so uh, you have to. In fact, I understand we're going to get some rain on Sunday. That's what I heard so too. Got oh, a little bit of a uh, wet spell coming. So we'd want to. The best thing you can do is cover your plants, have a big umbrella over point. them, so to speak. Uh, now we have a typical them. potluck the last Sunday of the month out at Kelly Point Park. So if it's raining this Sunday, the that potluck is going to be canceled. So just know that if it's raining at noon on Sunday, the Kelly Point Park uh, potluck is over for that day. We have another caller. Welcome to the show, caller. Oh, yes. I was wondering if you had the information specifically about Alzheimer's for a THC relation. I mean, I know it's Alzheimer's agitation qualifies, but I was uh, not sure on specific uh, science. Like, Well, you know, with, with neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's, they found that cannabis slows the progression of those diseases. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, uh, even though here in the state of Oregon, agitation associated with Alzheimer's is the qualifying condition, most doctors can recommend it, you know, for most Alzheimer's patients. Uh, okay. But uh, uh, it also lessens the dystonic movement or tremors associated with uh, all neurodegenerative conditions. So okay. it's helpful in that regard, too. So now, do you think like an osteopath that's a neurologist would be maybe better than like a Providence neurologist or something? You know, as long maybe? as it's an MD or a DO in the state of Oregon, uh -huh. or if you're in uh, Washington State, a naturopath or a uh, nurse practitioner in addition to an MD or a doctor of osteopathy, either one of those okay. can uh, recommend medical marijuana in those states. Okay. And is lemon pledge around? Yeah, Anywhere? yeah. Okay. It's particularly uh, mold and mildew resistant. Yes, it is. Yeah. Do, uh, okay, well, I'll, I'll try and get in touch with you personally. All right, yeah, no. great. Okay, great. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. We have another question from studio, or actually a, a, a recommendation. Welcome to the show. Hi. Uh, my name is Queen Bead, uh, Corinthia Bethune, also known as Queen Bead. I'd like to let all the cannabis condiment, common sense people know about something that's going on in St. John's at John's Tavern at 8608 North Lombard. It's the Saturday Night Reggae Flex is put on by YT and Small Axe. Also, Jagged Culture and I, myself, Queen Bee, will actually be getting on the mic too sometimes. So we'd like to try to get people to come down every Saturday night at John's Tavern at 8608 North Lombard, right in the heart of St. John's. And St. John's is a Portland neighborhood for those folks out there who don't know. Yep. And it's Saturday Night Reggae Flex. You can look it up at um, on Facebook under YT or Small Axe, or you can look it up under my name, Corinthia Bethune, or contact me at www www.myspace. Yep. I get it right here. You get it www.myspace.com slash keep portland green which is the name of my band so we're wanting all the cannabis common sense people come down in potland or a green and come and celebrate with us all right thank you thank you appreciate the invitation and we have another caller on the telephone line welcome to the show caller hello howdy hey my name is jay hey jay 
Hey, I was wondering if um, Knox Gelatin um, will actually um, uh, detoxify um, marijuana. If what will? Knox Gelatin. Uh, Knox Gelatin. I'm not sure. I can't answer that. Do you know anything about I it? I don't know anything about that. Where'd you get that information? I don't know. Someone was telling me if I wanted to you know, be clean for UA, then um, take some Knox. No, I wouldn't trust that. The best you thing you can do is to uh, abstain. abstain for uh, several weeks before the test. If that's not possible, then... Uh, uh, like a week before. The longer, the better. Well, you know, up to 30. I mean, it depends on how heavily you use it. If you're a heavy user okay. like me, then you probably want to go without for about 30 days. But if you're just an occasional user, a week should be fine. And what would be good for that? You can try going to any one of the local head shops anywhere in the state, and they probably will have better advice than we do because we don't deal in those things. We're oh, I gotcha. Yeah, the only, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't give out urine tests myself. Uh, oh, right. I, I Me allow neither. That, so I haven't had to deal with that, and I'm sorry that, you know, you're forced to, to have to uh, let them test your bodily fluids for employment. That's a shame. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You bet. You're welcome. We hope that when we legalize hemp and cannabis with our Cannabis Tax Act petition, that uh, uh, the urine tests will be a thing of the past. You know, they don't allow urine testing in Europe because of civil liberties issues. And so right. uh, it's become where the United States is no longer the land of the free, it's the land of the pee, according to many people in Europe. Right. But, you know, we have a film clip we're going to roll, and you were in this, this nifty yeah. movie, uh, yeah. A Normal Life. It is nifty. Yeah, and I am in it. You have the, the <laughs> cover of it right here, uh, supporting the right of patients to use marijuana as medicines. One of the things. It's about the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. Yeah, this hey, is a three-minute clip about the about the film itself. It's a trailer. So uh, we'll go. run that, and we'll be back in just a moment. What is cannabis? Cannabis, of course, is a medicine. I think it's important to, to say that no medication is going to work for everybody all the time. And it's a specific for migraines. It's a specific for seizures. The take on the plant is that it's symbiotic with the human. If you can get something that's natural, that has literally zero side effects. It, it works as a almost a ubiquitous inhibitor of a lot of systems in the brain. The science is absolutely clear. The pharmaceuticalization of cannabis is just beyond the horizon. I think it's easier for men to come out and say they support it. Because women have a lot more on the line, you know, if they're mothers, then they have their kids on the line. So I tried it, and at first, it, you know, it freaked me out. I had a few panic attacks. We know that cannabis can prevent Alzheimer's, and if it can reduce all these ailments and keep your stress level low, that adds years to your life before you're even sick. And so the petrochemical, pharmaceutical, military, industrial, transnational, corporate fascist lead SOB, vilified the cannabis plant. We're all grown up now. We're not in the closet anymore. We don't give a fuck what you think. We smoke marijuana. But once you just let go with it and just be, it does so many things. It's, uh... Consciousness opens the doors of perception, expands consciousness, and puts you in a receptive state. I like to say when I give lectures, I start off by saying I smoke pot and I like it a lot. Part of what we're doing with Oregon Normal is trying to uh, maximize the Oregon Medical Marijuana Act and try to help the patients that truly need uh, the medicine. America's ready for a change in the, in the marijuana laws. We're, we're reached critical mass to change this critical mess. Let's hope we can all live together in peace and harmony love and uh, legalize marijuana for God's sake. <laughs> All right, so that is this new movie produced by uh, uh, Portland Rod producer Pittman. Rod Pittman and uh, Doug Ross. And you, it won some awards during its production, right? That, uh, wow, what happened was they had uh, submitted it to the Producers Guild in New York City at their annual convention. 
and as a short and they viewed it and then one other short and the executive committee took it on as a special project because they liked it so much and uh, because of that effort by the exec com executive committee we were able to land uh, Cinema Libre as the worldwide distributor for it. The distribution is one of the most critical points on any of It's very difficult like for movies. So uh, difficult. to get a distributor was a major thing and uh, uh, and we we have to absolutely thank the uh, the efforts of the the producers of the film, but also the the uh, producers guild and their efforts on our behalf. So you can find out more about this movie at cinemalibrastudio.com. That's cinemalibrastudio.com, or at a normal life the movie.com. That's a normal. Normal is without the a. A normal life the movie.com. While the camera's here, we might as well to our little show and tell segment. We have a hemp salad oil that uh, oh. studio audience member brought in from Foods Alive. It's hemp oil dressing, sweet and sassy with ag ag agave and uh, vinegar. So that's a nifty thing. Uh, over 50% hemp oil blended with sweet raw uh, agave and sassy apple cider vinegar. And then Sounds right, good, actually. Then here we have raw hull hip seeds from the same company. So these were provided uh, uh, gratis, and we're grateful to, to show them here. It says, uh, hulled hemp is the soft, delicate inner meat of the hemp seed without the crunchy shell. The texture is rich and creamy, and the taste is similar to that of pine nut or sunflower seed. And they're packed with protein, iron, zinc, magnesium, vitamin E, riboflavin, Omega-3 and the rare Omega-6 GLA. So, Are those Canadian? Are they Canadian? Yeah, it's all can Canadian. That's you can't get think. it produced domestically. And so all Stupid. food quality hemp products in North America are produced in Canada. So, uh, but it's good and good for you. So if you have a, uh, a question for us tonight, you can call us at 503-288-4448. We have a caller standing by. Welcome to the show. Caller? Hi. Hey. Howdy. I was wondering, um, how many doctor visits in the state of Oregon do you need to get your card? Well, you only need one doctor, an MD or doc, a DO, a medical doctor or doctor of osteopathy in the state of Oregon. Mm -hmm. There are about 8,500 doctors and about 3,500 of those doctors have signed and recommended medical marijuana for patients. And so uh, uh, out of the 8,500, about 3,500 of them have signed recommendations. And we have that information from the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program office at the Oregon Department of Health. Oh, so you just have to go see one doctor and then? One doctor can do it. Uh, that's, the, that's the way it works. Uh, it's up to the doctor, of course, and based on, you have to have one of the qualifying conditions, which is soon to pop up right here on the screen beside me. Uh, there they are, chronic pain, nausea, AIDS, glaucoma, IBS, seizure and spastic disorders, asthma, which is a spastic disorder, it qualifies that way, GERD, uh, Crohn's disease, those are both uh, things that cause pain and uh, uh, nausea. Uh, hepatitis C does as well, and then cancer is a qualifying condition and on its own. So for chronic pain, could it just like any pain that you, it like... Well, the, the, the it has to be a severe pain. I mean, it can't be yeah. like, you know, my finger hurts or something like that. It has to uh, be the result of a medical problem. So someone's got so metal like rods in their back or... Huh? I gave birth to my son, and it dislocated my hip, and it's Ouch. not fixable. Uh-huh. And so I've had, like, consistent, horrible pain where Sorry. I can't walk at times. Uh-huh. That sounds like a qualifying condition to me. I think awesome. most doctors would agree. I'm tired of the pain pills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we like to see patients get off those pain pills when they use medical cannabis, and most of them do. Cool. Because it just makes it hard having a kid being on pain pills. You're right. That's right. It's hard to do just about cannabis. anything when you're on pain pills except sleep. Yeah. Well, All right. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. You're welcome. Thank okay. you for calling. Okay. If uh, you have a question for us tonight, call us at 503-288-4448. Uh,
That's 503-288-4448. If you're out there and you or a loved one or someone you know might qualify for medical marijuana and you're not sure uh, where to uh, find a doctor, we have a doctor referral service and doctors all over the state of Oregon and all over the United States who can help you. You can call us at, here in the Portland area, 503-235-4606. It's 503-235-4606. If you're outside the Portland area, you can call us toll free at 1-800-723-0188. That's 1-800-723-0188. Or you can go to our web portal, to all our different websites, at hemp.org, H-E-M-P dot O-R-G. So you've been making progress in, in uh, wrapping up the details for our Hemp Stock Festival, I understand. That's true. Uh, always, there is always cleanup. You always have to have cleanup. I'd like to thank all of the staff members who were there uh, throughout the event. It was, a, it was very taxing for all, our, all of us. It was. It was it's a big so job. So many people that showed up. We were. We were not. I saw estimates at fifty thousand on Saturday. I would. I would. Twenty five thousand on uh, on Sunday. I'm. I wouldn't fight those estimates at all. We yeah. we had a big crowd. Uh, we the had cars one of our went out people, parked for four miles. We had both one of sides our blue of the road. People tell me or tell uh, us that uh, even though they were at Seattle as well, they they sold as much out of their food booth on, at our day on at our event on Saturday as they did for Seattle. Mm -hmm. so I heard that every year. That's, I, hear that every uh, I year. was amazed, and so and pleased for the, our vendors that did well, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to come back. As October first, we've got to put in an application again right away to to uh, reassemble our troops and do it again next year. We have to let the city know almost right away, and uh, such is life. So it, it, it's a never-ending turnaround. We're looking now forward to year number eight and some additions that we would love to, uh, you know, consider. So hopefully the bridge will be open this year and we'll be able to have better uh, parking in both directions. And we hopefully also we'll be able to get another uh, street permit to close the outside lanes. That certainly helped a lot. Took some pressure sure off. Did. So you know, there's. Uh, at least some ideas about what we should do if we stay at Kelly Point Park or if we go to another venue. Those, those decisions are, are about to be made by us and the city because we have to definitely begin negotiation with them again. So if you have a question for us tonight, you can call us at 503-288-4448. That's 503-288-4448. You can also watch this online at Ustream.tv. So if you've got a friend somewhere, anywhere in the world really, that uh, you want them to watch the show, you can tell them to go to ustream.tv and they can watch this just about anywhere. And then we're, uh, we're, we're recorded and placed on quite a few different markets across from Seattle to Boston is what I understand. Yeah, that's true. About 17 cities, I think, right now. Wouldn't testify to that, but I think that's pretty accurate. I wouldn't be surprised by that. There was a lot of them. We add some from time to time as well. I think we added a few new ones down in uh, Arizona here recently. So, yep, yep, we have. So, um, have you heard any feedback on your movie now that it's out and about? Any uh, uh, talk with Not Rod really. Pittman? No, I haven't had. Well, I've, actually, I've seen Rod a couple of times in, mm -hmm. uh, in person, mm -hmm. and uh, he was just excited that it was finally getting out and. And, it was pretty uh, quick. Uh, it was quick. Yeah. From the time they they did it and, and put it all together, uh, it takes so much effort that I'm surprised and pleased to see them do that. But now I have not talked to him here in a few weeks, so no, I need to. I should connect. You've caught me short here. All right, uh, we have another caller. Welcome to the show, caller. Hello. 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 There you are. Yeah, I'm just kind of wondering. Turn your TV down. We're getting some feedback here, if you can. Okay. All right. How many That's plants better. can you have at one time was the question. Oh, how many plants you can have? Okay. Uh, in Oregon, you can have six plants that are not limited in size and a total of 18 plants that are smaller than one foot uh, wide or one foot tall. So you can have a total of 24 plants, but only six of them can be taller or wider than one foot. In the state of Washington, you can have uh, uh, 15 plants in total. If you are in Hawaii, you can have seven plants and only three of them can be budding. In Washington, it doesn't matter what size they are or what stage of growth or flowering they're at, you can just have up to 15 plants. 
And so, uh, but Oregon, we're limited to six plants that are larger, taller than one foot, no more than 24 plants in total. Okay. So that is the number of plants you can have in the state of Oregon. Also in Oregon and Washington, we now are able to have 24 ounces. Our patients who hold a medical marijuana permit can have uh, up to 24 ounces of cannabis. Uh, once you go over that, then you would be subject to criminal prosecution. But as long as you stay under that, then it should be just fine. Which is a good thing. Who wants to go to jail? Uh, but there was, a, what, 800,000 plus arrests for? Uh, About 868,000, uh, I think it was. Sorry, but I, you for know, marijuana alone. we got to comment on that. That is an awful statistic. Mm -hmm. That is the worst thing and I've heard yet. And 7.9 million people since uh, the 2000. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Past few years. My word, that's ridiculous. I'm sorry. It's just, it's, it's insane to be wasting our money when we have so many other problems that we could address almost immediately with that money. It is the most insane thing that our government perpetuates this idiocy on a daily basis throughout the country. We have one of our uh, crew uh. here has come back to the microphone again and wants to make a statement. Go ahead, Sylvie. Um, well, actually, it's a question. Okay. So. When it comes to baked goods, oils, butters, do any of the states have any distinctions? And can you have a certain amount of any of that? Is it different than your bud, etc.? What do they actually count? You know, in every state except Colorado, there is no clear guideline for that in state law. And some law enforcement agents would weigh the entire baked good or, or food product or oil infusion or tincture and say that's your weight. Colorado has a, as of July of last year, has a specific permit for uh, food, cannabis food preparation. And so uh, uh, you can have a larger amount there. I can't say exactly what that quantity is, but uh, it's uh, a very, uh, uh, it's a gray area that uh, I can't answer right now. Is it sensible with them? Do they handle it well? You've been there. In Colorado? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a, a, a rapidly growing industry. There's a lot of folks oh, I know uh, it is. You're right. uh, that are, uh, you know, get permits. And, and, and it's held to the same standards as other food production, which as is good. You know, be. I know that a lot of times when, when you buy uh, these food products, uh, out like we had some people illegally going through our park and selling them. Some people right. got sick exactly. from that. You exactly. Know? In Seattle you know? as well. Yeah, that in was Seattle. the number one problem. You don't know uh, about the quality of the food or the, the butter or the oil it, or you know, regularly. it's been out in the hot sunlight. And yeah, Grandpa so. was out with his unwashed hands mixing it behind the trailer. Yeah, you know? something. Mm. Sorry, anyway. I didn't mean to give that bad vision to anybody, but that's what can happen quickly. We have another caller. Welcome to the show, caller. No, oh, no, I scared them, them away with that one. This is your chance. If you have a question, you can call us at 503-288-4448. It's not, it's not that we're against good medibles. It's that, well, for one, in Oregon, they add to the law. I mean, they add to the weight. Okay, and uh, it, like we were just, just discussing, you don't know what you're really getting. You can be very sick very quickly. Yeah, it's best if you, you make them yourself. There's no doubt. So I'd like to once again remind you that we'd love to get you involved in our petition to end adult cannabis prohibition. We're currently circulating a petition with roughly 35,000 signatures in hand. We need uh, 87,000 valid signatures to qualify for a vote. So uh, we're, we'd love for you to go to that website right there, CannabisTaxAct.org, and you can print out a single signature petition sheet you can get our volunteer package or you can make a donation to uh, help our cause. In fact, uh, for Oregon taxpayers, if you donate up to $50, you get that refunded uh, in a tax credit of up to $50 per person and up to $100 for married couples filing jointly. So uh, you can go right there. We've hired a company, C&E Systems, that manages most Democratic uh, candidates' campaigns, including uh, our Governor Kitzhaber and former Governor Kulingowski and my good buddy, Attorney General John Kroger. 
manages their campaigns and uh, uh, they're managing ours as well so that we comply with all reporting requirements and make sure all those payroll taxes are paid and everything. So go to CannabisTaxAct.org for more information. We have another caller, though. Welcome to our show, caller. Hello. Medical marijuana card for cerebral palsy? Yes, definitely. Cerebral palsy uh, qualifies as a uh, condition that causes spasms, and uh, uh, definitely it helps with uh, neurodegenerative diseases. It's actually sh shown, cannabis has been shown to slow the progression of a wide variety of neurodegenerative diseases, including cerebral palsy. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. If you're out there and you're looking for a uh, physician who can help you get your medical marijuana permit, we have physicians all across the Northwest and all across the nation. You can call us toll free outside of the Portland area at 1 800 723 0188. That's 1 800 723 0188. Or if you are here in the Portland area, call us at 503 235 4606. It's 503 235 4606. Zero six, and we'll be happy to refer you to a physician who can help you get a medical marijuana permit. So, uh, Tim, you are uh, haven't been promoting the movie, been working on the Hempstock Festival. That's correct. You got some more music for us here in just a minute to sure, close out always, the show. Always, I always have music. I know I've you been do. playing this for a while now. You know, uh, what is this, episode 602? Yep, 602. Yep. And in fact, uh, our 15th year, we've been producing, I've been on the, right. doing it since October. Or my first show was October of 1996. So we're about so, to face our 15th yep, anniversary. we're at our 15th anniversary. We have another caller, though. Welcome to the show, caller. Hi. Howdy. Hello. 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 There you are. Um, <laughs> my name is Trina, Hello, and Trina. Um, recently my mother is an ALS patient. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know what that is, Lou Gehrig. Yes. And so another um, neurodegenerative I had condition. A, I had a niece die of it. Wow. So I understand to hear that. that. Yes. It's not a nice thing. No, it wasn't. <laughs> um, but we've been experimenting with the metables, and I've actually found that. Um, not only does it increase her alertness, but it severe, it, I mean, tremendously decreases her pain. Um, but my question is, is there a place, um, because I've just basically been incorporating the different trims and flowers into muffins and cakes and, um, jams and things like that. Um, I've heard about hemp butter. Is there a place online or somewhere where I can go? Um, because I understand it's something I can make here at home, and that's a lot easier to use the cannabis for cooking rather than trying to use the actual plant. So I'm wondering if there's a place where I can get recipes or if I can buy the hemp butter or if anybody knows how to make it. You know, the, the laws as they stand right now are a gray area when it comes to sales in the state of Oregon. And in uh, Washington, uh, it's just regulated in the city of Seattle. The rest of the uh, 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 state, uh, they, they're closing down most of those dispensaries. But you can make uh, uh, your butter. We recommend putting in uh, about an ounce per cup of butter and uh, uh, letting it cook and then strain, cook at a low heat, no, nothing above about 220 between 180 and 220, and then uh, straining it to take out the organic matter. And then you can mm -hmm. use that butter in any other recipe. But, Fantastic. Uh, now, some of the dispensaries out there, and I think there are about 40 here in the city of Portland, they might offer butter. I can't answer that. I haven't been in there uh, well, to find out. Well, I have a recipe out. now. I don't need it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty easy to make. Hey, That's I love way. your show. And then one Thank more you. final question. Um, do you have, is there a, a place where I can look on your hemp.org that might link me to um, more research or whatever concerning Lou Gehrig's and cannabis? Yeah, yeah. There, there's a, uh, uh, a list we have on there that has uh, uh, links to all sorts of medical journal articles, and Lou Gehrig's and ALS is one of the uh, conditions. Uh, 
a lady back east uh, that, that goes by the name Granny uh, Storm Crow is out there. So you just uh, look for Granny Storm Crow's list. And it uh, is Great. a constantly growing compendium of uh, medical research on cannabis broken down by condition. So you just look, oh, go to that okay. list, look up ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, and uh, you'll find a, a wide variety of research on just that topic. Fantastic. Keep up the good work on educating people on the, all the benefits of cannabis use. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for your all support. Right. Have a good night. Thanks. And we've uh, come down with another show here, which is a couple minutes. We're going to jump over, and Tim Pate's going to play some music, and we're going to play some more pictures from our THCF medical garden. I'd like to remind you to please support our petition drive at that web address. Uh, uh, we need your support and uh, uh, we're trying to put it on the ballot to end adult marijuana prohibition and restore industrial hemp. So thanks for watching. We'll be back next week. We're going to be having tape shows for the first two weeks on the 7th and the 14th of October. So you won't want to come down to the studio on the 7th or the 14th of October, but we will be playing uh, videotapes on our uh, cable system. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week and help us restore hemp. See you next week, folks.